Hello, I'm Captain Chris Lee, Communications Chairman for the FedEx Master Executive Council. With me today is Captain Pat Haggerty, Fatigue Risk Management Committee Chairman. Hey, Pat. Thanks. How you doing, Chris? Pat, tell us a little bit about your background with the union and what your committee does. Yeah, so about in 2008, I complained to the scheduling committee about a pairing I was flying, and uh, they got me engaged with the uh, SIG and the PSET, so that's where I started back then. In uh, 2010, we had a fatigue risk management program started by the company, and so I started with Bill Sower working on that, and uh, I took over the chairmanship in about 2012. So I've been working with uh, the fatigue side since then. So SIG and the fatigue side are kind of working together? Yeah, we work together a lot just because uh, they put out the pairings with the company, the lines, the company puts out the pairings, and then uh, especially with the latest CBA, we'll talk about in a bit about how I get involved with uh, what they consider not perfect pairings. So what does the FOM and the CBA tell us? Yeah, so the latest uh, FOM and CBA, it's uh, fatigue. When you call it fatigue, you're complying with the CBA, the FOM, and the FARs. So some people think there's a negative stigma about calling them fatigue, but if you're not fit to fly, you should certainly call them fatigue. And the duty officer is actually your friend. Um, don't confuse if you're legal or fatigued. If you're calling the duty officer about fatigue, it's about fatigue. So once you call them fatigue and you're put into rest, you will be notified that you have to file a fatigue report. And that's a mandatory report. It took me a long time to get to become a mandatory report. But I've also been able to get rid of the... Uh, irregularity report because for a while there guys were getting two reports due. So when you're rested and ready to file a report, they, the company says 72 hours, you need to file a fatigue report. So I can get the information and then my committee can work on what we can do to improve it going forward. So that is a shall report? It is. Okay. Are, are pilots hesitant to call in fatigue still? I think so. You know, we're all uh, goal-driven people. The newest CBA has a a paragraph about when you call in fatigued, it used to all come out of your sick bank. Now we meet with the company monthly to discuss that month's fatigue events, and I would say over 50%, probably pushing two thirds of the time, uh, the sick bank is paid back into the pilot's sick bank if it needs to be. A lot of times the duty officer is your friend and may put you in rest if you're in the field or something like that. So it never even touches your sick bank. So when the FERC meets, who is on that committee and what's the role of that committee? That's with the new uh, contract. So it's a fatigue event review committee. Mm -hmm. And it's myself and my vice chairman, uh, Rob Bassett. And then uh, there's two company members that are on it. Then I, I, we talk all the time. So you talked about they don't always use a sick bank like it used to. There's really three different things that are going to happen. If, if you're in the field or, or it makes sense to put you in rest, you'll go to rest and then you'll catch up with your pairing. So that way nothing's ever done to your sick bank. Um, they may remove you from the, what pairing you're on right now mm -hmm. and then put you in rest and then the remainder of your pairing will come out of your sick bank. And then that's where I get involved with the company. We, and if there's any type of operational irregularity operations like maintenance, weather or something else going on, we take a look at that and that is a pretty easy decision. I will say this though, Chris, if, if I jump seat in, for example, and I'm counting on getting rest and then maybe my plane gets swept and I get in late and I don't get a nap and then I call in fatigued, well, that's on me. Right. So that's going to come out of my sick bank. And there's one more option in the, in the CBA that I can't really touch that if it's removed and put in your makeup bank, that's just the CBA. Another big change with the CBA was the disputed pairing process. Right. Can you tell us about that? Right. That's a good one. The old uh, disputed pairing process, you would find out when the, when the SIG put out the bid packs, right? You go, hey, pairing 23 is, right. is a disputed pairing. And you've noticed since then, there's been no disputed pairings in the bid packs. It's because the new uh, dispute process, they come to me, right? So the SIG puts out the pairings and what all the bases, and they come to my group and the company. And we meet together and we try to come to a consensus. Should it be fixed? Should it be uh, data collection? or does it need to move on forward? So typically, uh, the company is hesitant to uh, fix a pairing right then. We might be able to fix it going forward. Uh, so we get scientists involved. The company has a fatigue science, and we have a fatigue scientist. And typically, they don't want to get into industrial decisions. So the default would probably be collect data. Correct. So you talk about the data collection. How does that work, and how do you, you know, you're asking pilots to help you with that process. Yeah, so the data collection's been great, in my opinion. We started that uh, July of 2013. It took us almost two years to get enough data to kind of get our baseline of our night system form. 
So the first two years we kind of did all the uh, one leg in, one leg out of Indy and Alliance. Uh, then it goes to the scientists who have to do their uh, math and whatnot and give us a report back. So from, and we have a report that was out on the web page and I sent out a report uh, from the union as well about that. And we saw that, you know, if guys are typically, if you have like about a three and a half hour turn from block in to block out, average about two hours of sleep. And obviously as you shorten that uh, block in to block out, you get less sleep. Uh, because of this, I think the company really realized how professional we are at doing our job at getting sleep when we can. Mm -hmm. uh, because of that, the number of rooms we have is, you know, we're up to 234, I think is the number of rooms. We all used to race to Memphis when we were flying the 7-2 to try to get a sleep room because there wasn't enough or else you get a recliner. So now there's plenty of them. Uh, the other thing is uh, we could see if, you know, when I come in and I go to sleep at, you know, 11.55, light goes out, I lay down, I go to sleep. My, my alerts at, my, my sign is 2.30, I wake up at 2. You see the lights come on, I start moving all week long. We can see it all week long, everybody going to sleep about the same time and waking up the same time. There's a lost sleep opportunity there. That's where the wake up program came in. Okay. And I gotta tell you that industry wide, people are emulating this. UPS has talked to us about this and Atlas and others are trying to do the same program where there's thousands of hours each month of sleep opportunity that we, we pilots can get. It happened to me a couple weeks ago, a thunderstorm came through at night and they slipped the sort an hour, and my alert, my wake up call was an yeah, hour later. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's it's helpful. not perfect. Okay. Some guys are going to complain about there's a lot of little different things can happen, but I think we're moving in the right direction. So you think the wake up program challenges aside is is helpful? Yeah. A lot of pilots have reported it reduces their sleep anxiety. You know, I would set three alarms because I don't want to oversleep, and now a lot of that pressure is put onto the wake up program because the phone's going to wake me up and I don't have to worry about it as much. So a lot of guys reported the sleep anxiety is down a lot. Are you seeing a tie between depression, mental health, and fatigue? Yeah, it's something I've wanted to talk about a lot. Um, I always, in my emails with the FAA I'm SAFE uh, acronym, and mental health is just as important as physical health. And when we're, we're typically shift workers, if you want to look at it in the industry. So when we're flying at night, we're, we're shifting our circadian, and that's difficult. So we have the the pilot assistant hotline, which is a great thing. And there's a lot of people out there that don't want to admit that maybe they're having a problem. But if you're having a problem at home with a loved one or, or something that's going on, it may be because of your fatigue level. So one of the things you could do is call in, I think, call in fatigue, call in sick and get your mental health right. Maybe call the assistance line if you need it. Yeah, the PATH is a great program. We're getting a lot of new hires. Are you working with them, strategies, techniques on how to capture this sleep on the back side of the clock? It's a great, great comment. I mean, that's you and me when we're flying with our new hires and we get to try to do some mentoring. So it's really up to us as captains to try to do a great job with that. You know, they get information during BI, but, you know, it's, it, they're sucking on the fire hose at that yeah. point. So we put out a thing last year. I put out, my, my committee put out something. It's, it's on, if they go to fdx.alpa.org and come to the fatigue committee link and drop down to past articles, it's in there. Um, it's, so, yeah, we, we've been trying. Um, most of the guys I've been flying with are pretty good at it. And there's, you know, only a couple of guys that have a, are challenged with it. And usually there's issues with that uh, learning. But I think they're doing a pretty good job of it. But I think it's up to us to mentor them along with the company to try to. And, and they do. The company gives them a, a fatigue lesson during their basic in -doc. So they're trying as well. Now, the staffing of your committee. Are you looking for help? Always looking for some help because uh, it, this, our role within the company and scheduling is, is, is increasing, as you saw with the CBA. So uh, I'm looking for some people that are interested in, in helping out. I could use a couple people, yeah. Any final thoughts? Yeah, I would say that, um, you know, two years, uh, five years ago, I, if you called in fatigue, I wouldn't even hear about it. Right. Uh, and now it's automated. And there's been a lot of progress. And I, I really think the company likes to say we're industry leading in, in a lot of the things we do in fatigue. And we've kind of have to be objective based on everything, and we are. And I think we're moving forward. Yeah, it's not perfect, and there's some things I would like to see going forward. But I think really I'm positive about what's happened and where we're going with, with our fatigue committee. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming, and thank you for watching. For more information, please go to our website, fdx.alpa.org, and we'll see you next time.